Alright guys, very quickly I'm going to do a, I guess you could call it an unboxing of the Feathered Mantis and a quick uh, highlight of the H2 saddle. I just uh, got two of these saddles in and uh, have done some hands-on experience with the, the Mantis per my buddy's saddle and then I've hunted them several times out of the H2. And uh, so, real quickly, if you're thinking about an H2 saddle, here are the good, good features and what I would call maybe some of the things that think about this is what it comes in uh, h2 saddle priority before you mail and this is what the saddle looks like when you get it i chose the camouflage model you can show choose the you know the, the coyote brown model as well had the molly webbing straps in the back so you hang your accessories things of that nature i have some carabiners that i hang and i use my i hang my perch platform off of that uh, Simple, straightforward. One of the things I do like about the H2 saddle is the leg straps. The leg straps on them, they're sewn separately, so when this is around your waist, you, just, you can very easily just look at it. Rachel, grab the right leg one, and of course, just hook it to the little leg straps right here. Um, another bonus that I think is a bonus is I don't know how much it will pick it up on the, the film, but that, that butt seam or the butt, the saddle part is articulated. Uh, which is very, it becomes very comfortable, and so it, it wraps your, your butt cheeks, and uh, I find this to be very comfortable because of that feature, I believe. The one thing on the H2 saddle uh, that I, that was probably my least favorite is, is this buckle right here. There's only one method of tightening or loosening, and you can't just buckle it, and you can't just pull it. You have to literally feed it, Feed it up and then tighten it by pulling it through. So I really wasn't a big fan of that. Uh, overall, everything else about this saddle I like. Uh, let me go over quick with the Mantis. We'll do the unboxing. This is what you get with the with the tether. You get this this box has you know marketing all over it. Uh, one thing that they're going to have to do is they they use my picture here. If you look really close, so you got it. Me killing the buck, I will probably have to receive some royalties for, for that. But I was pretty impressed with the box and impressed. You open it up, I thought that was kind of genius. It says they're almost there, keep going. Whoever's in charge of that, I think it's Greg from G2 Outdoors, he's a marketing genius. Uh, when you open it up, it only gets better. You have you can recycle this paper and use that for Christmas gifts or stuff in a bag right away. Very well packed. If you order the Predator platform, it will go in here as well. But this is top notch, high quality. What you got here is a basically an envelope, um, and inside is your invoice. It's a little bit about the, the uh, product you have. It is a warranty page, so on and so forth. A lot of time, uh, a lot of advertisement, marketing genius. Uh, whoever came up with that idea. It just everything about uh, the unboxing screams quality. And so I really like this. This is the Sis Hauler that I got. It's own separate bag there, Sis Hauler ES. That was for my, my ropes. And then now, of course, this is the, the Mantis. Now, my testing, this is brand new. I, I bought it, but my buddy had gotten one, and he, I, I was able to mess around with his. So uh, one thing that I do like about this one is one is the mesh, uh, lightweight. Now, the H2 saddle, uh, the H2 saddle, I believe, is 600 denier Cador fabric, and that stuff is tough as nails. I think my uh, Exo Mountain backpack was 500, and so this is going to last long. You can see, you know, lots of stitching, lots of quality. Even with the, the Tethered Mantis, they both have a lot going for them in regards to their stitching and how well it, it is made. I noticed in a comparison, if I could say it like that, the Mantis comes with an ham steel blue uh, bridge of 24 inches, and uh, the H2 saddle comes with a bridge, just a, a webbing bridge, and you can adjust it shorter or a little bit longer here per the knot. So if I hang these up loop to loop, uh, we're coming in, I don't know, probably about two inches longer on the bridge uh, for this one, the H2 saddle, than the, than the Tethered Mantis. One of my favorite features about the Mantis is that right there, their buckle. When you put it on, I mean, it's the same ease of use, push it in and out. But with this one, you have the ability to 
to adjust it, you know, from both sides. You can adjust it by pulling, and so the adjustability of this belt uh, is top notch. I hope uh, every manufacturer will end up going with something like this. And so that was a big plus. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I posted on the Saddle Nation uh, Facebook page asking uh, if there was a way to adjust hip pinch on the Mantis. You know, I hunted, I hunted multiple times with my H2, and then when I put on the, the Mantis, I was wrapping around without really getting into it. When I put on the Mantis and I hung out of the, the platform at my buddy's house, the very first thing I noticed when I leaned back was how much hip pinch and how much pressure was on my lower back. Like, man, that, that, that's a little uncomfortable. Matter of fact, I won't want to sit in it, you know, for a long period of time like that. And so we went back and forth. I, I, I just, you know, her hitched a, a lineman's belt with a, a rope in and I, I, I could adjust my bridge because I figured that was what it was, the 24 inch bridge. So I used the lineman's rope to now become my bridge. And so I adjust that to, to out to 30, 32 inches and bring it back. And no matter where I put the bridge, it was still tight right here on my back. When I was hanging from it, this would literally squeeze in and I couldn't put my hands in here. Whereas when I'm hanging with the H2 uh, and this thing's locked on, if I can reach that. But when it's like that, I can, even when I'm hanging back, I can put, easily put my hand back there. There's really zero pressure on this top part. A lot of the pressure can be adjusted down here along Along where your butt is and I found that to be, be very comfortable and again I think that goes to the articulated uh, the, the, how it's sewn where it's sewn with that hip and then you can take the, the legs and you can pull them even tighter which loosens the top so I, I tried to adjust the legs on this I tried to adjust the bridge on it loosen the belt and for for me again now what I don't want is this to uh, be a hating on uh, any any manufacturer I am pro saddle manufacturer. I spent close to seven eight hundred dollars on three different saddles uh, this year, just trying to figure out which one's best for me. I support every one of them. Uh, they all have have great features. Again, I, I wanted to do my best to like the tethered mantis, and what I'm thinking is I might have to go with an extra large, uh, an extra large saddle, so that there's more material. Because if when when you put these on. I'm to wrap this around my waist. Let's do this real quickly. You can see where the, the hip the hips are right here. They they barely come out to the front of my pelvic bone, and so naturally the bridge is going to squeeze. It's going to put a lot of pressure. When I laid the H2 down in conjunction with the Mantis, I laid them down flat. You can see. I mean, I'm I'm at least. I would say, I don't know, four inches. I'm at least four inches in front of my pelvic bone there with this one. And so when you lay the, the H2 Mantis down flat, I'll just use the walls example. When you, when, you, when you lay them down loop to loop, you can see right here, there's almost six to seven inches more material on the H2 saddle than there is the Mantis. And I'm almost positive that's why this H2 fits me better. Uh, and so, I uh, came from an Evo, Evo Hunter or an Arrow Hunter Evo, and I, I would have black and blue marks on my hip. When I went to the H2 saddle, that changed, and then I, I wanted to go to this. And again, this is uh, Greg from G2 Outdoors has done an, a phenomenal job at what he's brought to the market for saddles and for the Saddle Hunter Nation. So uh, that is a Plus, he's helped me out with his YouTube channel more than anybody else has. So I am not knocking. I'm just trying to help somebody if they're trying to make a decision between the H2 or the Mantis or something of that nature. So this, I want everything to like it. I, I, I did my best, but when it came down to just being comfortable, I just could not get comfortable um, because how much upper back and hip pinch it, it had on me. So I, and, and although everything I wanted to like this, I got a buddy in Wisconsin. He's a, he's a, he would have been a small or a medium, I think, with the Mantis, uh, with the way the Mantis sizing chart is. He's getting the old tethered Mantis. He's buying that off me. And I'm gonna stick with this for now. And again, I am not biased for anything. Matter of fact, I wanna go with that, the, 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 the Kelstro Flex model. I'm gonna try that out. I'm trying them all out. And so 
I'm not trying to bash, I'm just trying to give a little information. And when I posted on Facebook Nation, uh, there was other guys who said this is the same exact thing that happened to me. It just seems like the sizing is different. And so uh, they ended up changing. Some of them went to H2, some of them went to the Flex model. So whatever's best for you, it, 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 that's what it comes down to. But if you're looking uh, for $165, there, there's now a, I think I saw on the website, there's a 10, a 10 day lead time versus a, a six to eight week lead time. And uh, this is gonna be mine for the for this hunting season, page two saddle. So anyway, I hope, I hope that gives you a little bit of uh, food for thought. Good luck this year, I hope that you slay a monster.